teaching and learning with Mr. Miller. Hello everyone, uh, this is another one of those free template videos. Um, so you can download a free template. This one's for a magazine front cover. Um, as you can see, here's the template here. Now, I've done this on Photoshop. Uh, don't worry, I am aware that you're not actually really supposed to use Photoshop to do a cover. You should probably use something like InDesign. That's what that's been created for. But if you're using this, doing this for your coursework or something like that, um, because I know uh, GCSE Media Studies very often ask you to create magazine front covers, you can just use Photoshop and you can use this template. Um, I've not really created anything here. I've actually taken everything from Google. So if I was going to be using this for coursework, I'd get in a bit of trouble because this image I didn't take. I've just taken it from a, from a stock image website. I downloaded the um, the barcode as well. So yeah, I can't use this. But you can use this and you can just delete and replace as necessary. Um, so just to give you a little bit of an overview, not that you necessarily need it, but just in case, is got the guidelines there. Uh, obviously, you wouldn't um, keep the guideline you can delete that afterwards but you want to make sure that you're not going past this outline here this is what we call the bleed so if it was to be printed which it probably wouldn't be but if it was going to be printed um, you wouldn't want to put anything there because it might get cut off in printing so that's for you to use um, I've got the overlays again I've put a vignette on it as I always do because I just like the idea of that you don't need to use that if you don't want to um, I got the background there. Um, I got the background image from a free background image website. So what I did was I went to Pix Pixels, which is free apparently. Who knows? Um, I just managed to download it. Didn't have to pay for anything. If I'm using this for educational purposes or coursework purposes, I'm sure I'm not going to have to pay. So it's fine. You can do the same again if you're using stock photos then you're not really getting the photos yourself so you're probably not going to get graded for it but whatever all i did was i literally just scrolled down you know these images would work perfectly um this one would work fantastically because you could just put the title at the top there um that's the image there i literally just scrolled down a couple of images and i found it if you're doing a food magazine this one will work perfectly obviously white text on uh, on a black background um, and you can use any of these as you need to if you are um, going to be taking your own photographs um, what I recommend you do is look at these and try and recreate them you know essentially all we've got there is a, uh, a woman with a relatively bland background looking at the camera um, and creating some sort of pose um, you can see there's a lot of headspace there so you would be able to create the uh, you would be able to put the titles there um, and you could put everything else around it um, this one might be a little bit too close uh, you know you putting the title over there is going to put that if you've got any side text it's going to go over the eyes so something like this would work perfectly uh, in fact actually the first thing you should probably do is just type in magazine front cover lifestyle or something and see what you get um, what I've tried to do is I've just tried to copy them um, don't try and be too original uh, even though obviously each of these have what we call a house style, some of them have text above the title or the masthead, some of them have below, whatever. Um, choose the um, choose the conventions uh, and the rules that you like, and then just copy them. Obviously, you know some of them, like you know Time Magazine, um, have a, a red border um, that's very famous for it. Reveal it's fantastic because it's revealing what's behind. That's good fun as well. So you can play around with the rules, but make sure that you have actually analysed the conventions first. Um, and then, like I said, I got um, an image from there, put it on there as the background. I did a backup in case I screwed it up, which I didn't, but, you know, it's just exactly the same layer. Um, at the top, I've got the title, um, I've got the tagline, and I've got the price. You can amend that as necessary. And you might have noticed that the, uh, the model's head is over the title. The way I did that is um, I have actually just cut out the head, and I just put it over it as well. So actually, if I was to get rid of that, that's how it originally looks. Uh, and I cut the head out and put it over. If you don't know how to do that, check out one of my other tutorials on Photoshop because there is actually a tutorial on how to cut heads out um, using, and that, that was just a quick selection tool. So it's not even done professionally. It's done, done really quickly. Um, another thing I've done is I've added some right side text there, as you can see, which is aligned right uh, with the guideline. Um, make sure that you are aligning the right text up there with the right and the left with the left, obviously. Um, I've got some center text there, which I've put at the bottom, which is centered because it's in the middle. You know, you can see how it works. Um, and on the left side, I've put this ellipsis with something in. Often they do that. I don't actually like that. I don't think it looks very good. I think it kind of ruins the style. But, you know, keep it, change it, amend it however you want to, if you want to. Uh, or just delete it. It doesn't really matter. 
Um, one other thing I should probably mention is, um, or two other things I should mention is one is the typography. Make sure that you're using a good typeface. I went to the font and downloaded a free font. Often you have to pay for these, but obviously if we're using this for educational, of course, what purposes, you probably won't have to. Um, and all I did was I literally just went to basic and I went to serif because I wanted the flicks on the end of the letters. That's what serif means. And you can just see, I mean, that one's called Vogue. So I'm guessing that's what Vogue used. That would work perfectly. Um, I can't remember which one I downloaded. Uh, I don't think I'm going to have to go very far. That one's called Magazine. You know, it's pretty obvious how they're doing it, aren't they? So all you've got to do, I think Midline is the one I used. You just download it. It will tell you, look, free for personal use. So not from a commercial use. You can't make any money from this. But chances are you're using this for coursework. Download that. Make it look nice. If you're going to be using other typefaces, keep them simple. Don't have too complicated typefaces together. It will make it difficult. Um, I've tried to make these stand out. I don't think they do too much by putting some blending options on them. You know, you, you can see I've got blending options on pretty much everything there. Um, delete it, do whatever you want to. Obviously, the way to create blending options is right click or two finger click and blending options. And that'll do that as necessary. Uh, and the last thing I want to talk about is color. Uh, make sure you're getting colors that are complementary. What I do is I use Adobe Color. Um, it's a, you know it's free uh, and it is pretty good. So what I did was I just grabbed the eye droplet tool and I chose something which the, with the most predominant color. I mean it seems like her, her shorts here or trousers whatever are the only thing that are really standing out. So what I did was I just got the color. Um, I think I actually chose something like that. I click there and then you can get the code there. So command C or copy it. Command uh, Control C. Go over here and then literally just paste it into one of these things. Press enter and then you're going to get loads of other ones there. These will all work together. Um, that's not particularly great. Let's go for complementary and just keep pasting it in there until you find it. These fonts will work together. So you can see what I did was I got that. That's what I've used for the ellipsis right there. This is what I've used for that text. This is what I've used for that text. So while the text doesn't stand out necessarily, um, the colors are complementary. There you go. And that's as simple as a magazine cover is. If you are creating an entire magazine, I recommend using InDesign. If you don't want to do the front cover in InDesign, you can just export this um, as a JPEG or a PNG and put it in there. And the good thing is, actually, if you're using InDesign, you can actually just bring in the PSD file, which is the Photoshop document file. You don't even need to um, export it, really, which is quite good. Um, that's why Adobe Creative Cloud works so well together. All right, guys, download that. Um, if you've got any questions, chuck them in the comments. Thanks so much. See you next time.